Government is not reason. Government is not eloquence. Government is force. And like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yes, you've tuned into The Real Story. My name is Daniel Apney, and I have just a couple things to say. First off, let's start off with tonight's shirt, which you should remember because we've worn it before. This is the shirt that says, Mass Murderers Agree, Gun Control Works. Yeah, so we have Hitler. He was a big advocate of gun control, huh? Then we have Stalin, another big advocate of gun control. And don't leave out Mao. Yeah, he only killed 60 million of his own. They called it a, re a cultural revolution. But once again, a big advocate of gun control. So mass murderers do agree. Gun control does work. So what do we have for you tonight? Yes, we have... Boy, have you seen what's been going on in the news? Every now and then they give you a blurb, but they don't tell you too much. I'm going to throw some words. Here's your homework. Why don't you type in Fast and Furious? Oh, excuse me, ATF. That's Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, O, oh, and E, Explosives. But the ATF... Fast and Furious. We're also finding out now that the FBI was involved. It goes all the way up to the Department of Justice to Eric Holder. So we can remember, well, we'll ask later in the program, where have we heard our new Attorney General? Where does his name come in before? Have we heard that? So what do we have for you? Well, it turns out that your government, that's right, the one that you pay taxes to, remember you got a tax return? Why do you use their words? So anyway, they gave you some of your money back. So anyway, they took your money, and in the stimulus bill, here I have a copy and I'm going to read it to you. Here's a little piece copy of it. But it says, um, for additional amount this, uh, for state and local law enforcement, you ever wonder where they get the, um, the AR-15s and the M-16s that the Sharon police used down at the main beach on July 3rd? You know, where'd you get those, where'd you get that firepower? Where'd the money come from? But anyway, for additional amount, state and local law enforcement assistance of $40 million. Well, we spent some money there. Um, for competitive grants to provide assistance and equipment to local law enforcement along the southern border in the high-intensity drug trafficking areas. So the government knows it's high-intensity drug trafficking in the southern borders, right? Like they don't traffic in all states. But anyway, here we go. It gets better. To combat criminal narcotics activity stemming from the southern border, of which 10 million of that 40 million shall be transferred to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives for salaries and expenses for ATF Project Gunrunner. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Let's talk about Project Gunrunner. Well, it turns out that American Border Patrol agents and police officers in the southern borders have been being killed shot by people that your government, remember your taxes, gave the guns to. Now to begin with, when you see that these gun, these crime cartels, this, you know, drug lords and all that stuff, now I gotta remember, CIA, Cocaine Importation Agency, that's right, it was their plane that crashed in Mexico with the four tons of coke. Oh, that's just homework for you. But it's funny, rocket launchers and automatic weapons, you can't buy at gun shops. Yeah, I don't know. You just can't go down a Bass Pro Shops and buy a fully auto AK, can you? Or a Heckler & Koch automatic. Or an M16. Boy, if you don't believe me, go ask the police chief of Sharon. I'm sure that he'll tell you that, you know, you can't buy fully auto weapons down at Bass Pro Shops. Let alone grenade launchers. So it gets interesting because you find out in Project Gunrunner, there was another operation called Fast and Furious where the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and E, explosives, were not just allowing but telling gun dealers to sell guns to known criminals who were going to give them to who? To drug cartel people south of the border. And they were going to, quote, track them. Well, why I say all this is some more homework tonight is what's a false flag event? Is that when I attack the guy next to me and blame the other guy by dressing up? Matter of fact, didn't, um, all throughout history, isn't it full of false flag events? Not just 9-11. You know, we blame it on somebody else, even though there's no physical way they could have done it the way they tell you the story. But here's how it goes. So now we know that up to 30,000 guns, including grenade launches, have been sold to Mexican drug gangs. And that you've heard of Los Zetas, maybe you haven't. Homework, Los Zetas. Los Zetas is training at the School of the Americas. That's the Army base in Fort Benning, Georgia. 
Yeah, so your government's training gun runners, uh, excuse me, drug runners, your government's giving them guns, now they're shooting cops. So Joe, Joe Bernstein, when you're watching the show, do you want one of your officers shot by a drug guy that the government gave the gun to? Does that make sense for Joe Bernstein? Does it make sense for the Sharon viewer? So here you go, here's your first one. Here's a little video just to show you that it's not me making this up. But yes, you can find your, gu your government giving guns to drug gangs. Here you go. Everyone, they are two presidents leading a war against a common enemy, Mexican drug cartels. President Obama welcomed Mexico's President Felipe Calderon to the White House today. And Mr. Obama said the two countries are making progress against drug gangs. To combat the southbound flow of guns and money, we are screening all southbound rail cargo seizing many more guns bound for Mexico, and we are putting more gun runners behind bars. But one of the men on the front lines of the drug war is telling a very different story to CBS News, making an accusation that could cost him his job. An agent with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms claims the agency has a policy that is actually putting guns in the cartel's hands. Here's investigative correspondent Cheryl Atkinson. John Dodson, a federal agent, says what he was asked to do was beyond belief. You were intentionally letting guns go to Mexico. Yes, ma'am. I mean, the agency was. An alcohol, tobacco, and firearms senior agent assigned to this Phoenix office since 2010, Dodson's job is to stop gun trafficking across the border. Instead, he says he was ordered to sit by and watch it happen. Investigators call the tactic letting guns walk, in this case, into the hands of criminals who would use them in Mexico and the U.S. Dodson's bosses say that never happened. Now he's risking his job to go public. I'm boots on the ground here in Phoenix and telling you we've been doing it every day since I've been here. Here I am. Tell me I didn't do the things that I did. Tell me you didn't order me to do the things that I did. Tell me it didn't happen. Now you have a name on it. You have a face to put with it. Here I am. Someone. Now. Tell me it didn't happen. Agent Dodson and other insiders say the gun walking strategy was approved all the way to the Justice Department. The idea was to see where the guns ended up, build a big case, and take down a major cartel. And it was all kept secret from Mexico. ATF named the case Fast and Furious. This surveillance video obtained by CBS News shows suspected drug cartel suppliers carrying boxes of weapons to their cars at a Phoenix gun shop. Those long boxes being loaded into the red car are AK-47 type assault rifles. He's out again, carrying another, appears to be five boxes of hard case Pelican and Hardy pistol. So it turns out ATF not only allowed the guns to walk, they videotaped it. Documents show the inevitable result. The guns ATF let go began showing up at crime scenes in Mexico. And as ATF stood by, watching thousands of weapons hit the street, the Fast and Furious group supervisor noted the escalating Mexican violence. 958 killed in March 2010, the most violent month since 2005. The same email notes, our subjects purchased 359 firearms during March alone, including numerous Barrett 50 caliber rifles. Did you feel that ATF was partly perhaps to blame for the escalating violence in Mexico and on the border? Yes, ma'am. I even asked them if they could see the correlation between the two. The more that our guys buy, the more violence that we're having down there. Senior agents, including Dodson, told us they confronted their supervisors over and over. And what was the answer? What did they say? If you're going to make an omelet, you got to scramble some eggs. There was so much opposition to the gun walking that an ATF supervisor issued this email noting a schism among the agents. Whether you care or not, people of rank and authority at headquarters are paying close attention to this case. We are doing what they envisioned. If you don't think this is fun, you're in the wrong line of work. Maybe the Maricopa County Jail is hiring detention officers and you can get $30,000 to serve lunch to inmates. It, we, we, we just knew it wasn't going to end well. There's no way it could. Then, on December 14, 2010, Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was gunned down. Dodson got the bad news from a colleague. And they said, did you hear about the Border Patrol agent? And I said, yeah. And I said, well, you know, it was one of 
Fast and Furious guns. And there's really not much you can say after that. Two assault rifles ATF had let walk nearly a year before, similar to these, were found at Terry's murder. I felt guilty. I mean, it's crushing. I, I don't know how to explain it. I mean... Dodson and a dozen other ATF sources have all told the same story to Senator Grassley, who's investigating. You've tried to get some answers from ATF. What's been the response? The response has been practically zilch from the standpoint that documents we want, we have not gotten them, uh, and uh, I think it's a case of stonewalling. Dodson says he hopes that speaking out helps the family of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. They haven't been told much of anything about his murder or where the bullet came from. First of all, I would tell them that I'm sorry. Second of all, I would tell them that I've, <clears throat> I've done everything that I can for them to get the truth. After this, I don't know what else I can do, but I hope they get it. Dodson says they never did take down a drug cartel. However, he says thousands of fast and furious weapons are still out there and will be claiming victims on both sides of the border for years to come. Cheryl Atkinson, CBS News, Washington. Late today, the ATF said it will convene a panel to look into its national firearms trafficking strategy, but refused to comment specifically on Cheryl's report. For more of the ATF agent story, you can go to our website at cbsnews.com. So you probably thought I was kidding, huh? Well, I want to tell you, we still have some good congressmen. His congressman, Daryl Issa, and he's questioning the attorney general. Remember, Eric Holder is your attorney general. Okay? And he's saying, I didn't know anything about this until two weeks ago. Yet you saw that in the stimulus bill, that's right, because you were going to stimulate the economy, weren't you? Because we're in a really bad depression, aren't we? But we're going to give $10 million for Project Gunrunner. So here you go. Here's Daryl Issa grilling Eric Holder, who says, I didn't know. This is Ollie North in us, you know? Take it away. The gentleman from California, Mr. Issa, is recognized for his questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Attorney General, I'd like to thank you for the work that uh, the U.S. Attorney, Laura Duffy, is doing in San Diego, going after coyotes, going after gun traffickers at the border. Uh, the work in my border district area of making our city safer because the crime in uh, Mexico often stops at the border because of, of, of her work and willingness to prosecute human traffickers and gun traffickers is, is very much appreciated. So uh, just so you hear two, two sides of the California story for a moment. Mr. Attorney General, uh, we, uh, we have two Border Patrol agents who are dead, who were killed by guns that were allowed, as far as we can tell, to deliberately walk out of gun shops under the program often called Fast and Furious. This program, as you know, and the President's been asked about it, you've been asked about it, allowed for weapons to be sold to straw purchasers, and ultimately many of those weapons are today in the hands of drug cartels and other criminals. When did you first know about the program, officially I believe called Fast and Furious? To the best of your knowledge, what date? I'm not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. Now that you've been briefed on it, the President has said on March 22nd that you didn't authorize it. Did your Deputy Attorney General James Cole authorize it? I'm sorry, did the... The Deputy Attorney General James Cole? Did he... I didn't hear, did he... Did the, the, deputy, did the deputy Attorney General authorize it? My guess would be no, uh, Mr. Cole, I don't think was in the, I, I think, I don't think he was in the department at the time that operation started. But he's been aware of it much longer. Been aware of it much longer? Than you have, since you've only been aware of it a few weeks. 